Son of Code, say my mind, and you don't die, give as you receive, and your release is Satan. Today's teaching is the part three in the series, The Practice of Psychotherapy, and the name of this teaching is The Question of Payment. No one can pay for therapy, for healing is of God, and he asks for nothing. It is, however, part of his plan that everything in this world be used by the Holy Spirit in carrying out the plan. Even an advanced therapist has some earthly needs while he is here. Should he need money, it will be given him, not in payment, but to help him better save the plan. Money is not evil, it is nothing. But no one here can uh, live with no illusions, for he must yet strive to have the last illusion be accepted by everyone everywhere. He has a mighty part in this one purpose for which he came. He stays here but for this, and while he stays, he will be given what he needs to stay. Only an unhealed healer would try to heal for money, and he will not succeed to the extent to which he values it. Nor will he find his healing in the process. There will be those of whom the Holy Spirit asks some payment for his purpose. There will be those for whom he does not ask. It should not be the therapist who makes these decisions. There is a difference between payment and cost. To give money where God's plan allots it has no cost. It has no cost. To withhold it from where it rightfully belongs has enormous cost. The therapist who would do this loses the name of a healer for he could never understand what healing is. He cannot give it and so he does not have it. The therapists of this world are indeed useless to the world's salvation. They make demands and so and so they cannot give. Patients can pay only for the exchange of illusions. This indeed must demand payment and the cost is great. A bought relationship cannot offer the only gift whereby all healing is accomplished. Forgiveness, the Holy Spirit's only dream, must have no cost. For if it does, it merely crucifies God's Son again. Can this be how he is forgiven? Can this be how the dream of sin will end? The right to live is something no one need fight for. It is promised him and guaranteed by God. Therefore, it is a right the therapist and the patient share alike. If their relationship is to be holy, whatever one needs is given by the other Whatever one lacks, the other supplies. Herein is a relationship made holy, for herein both are healed. The therapist repays the patient in gratitude, as does the patient repay him. There is no cause to either, but thanks are due to both for the release from long imprisonment and doubt. Who would not be grateful for such a gift? Yet who could possibly imagine that it could be bought? It has well been said that to him who hath shall be given. Because he has, he can give. And because he gives, he shall be given. This is the law of God and not of the world. So it is with God's healers. They give because they have heard his word and understood it. 
all that they need will thus be given them. But they will lose this understanding unless they remember that all they have comes only from God. If they believe they need anything from a brother, they will recognize him as a brother no longer. And if they do this, a light goes out even in heaven. Where God's son tends against himself, he can look only upon darkness. He has himself denied the light and cannot see. One rule should always be observed. No one could be turned away because he cannot pay. No one is said by accident to anyone. Relationships are always purposeful. Whatever their purpose may have been, before the Holy Spirit entered them, they are always his potential temple, the resting place of Christ and the home of God himself. Whoever comes has been said. Perhaps he was sent to give, uh, to give his brother the money he needed. Both will be blessed thereby. Perhaps he was sent to teach the therapist how much he needs forgiveness and how valueless is money in comparison. Again, again we'll both be blessed. Only in terms of cost could one have more. In sharing, everyone must gain a blessing without cost. This view of payment may well seem impractical, and in the eyes of the world it would be so, yet not one worldly thought is really practical. How much is gained by striving for illusions? How much is lost by throwing gold away? And is it possible to do so? Truly, it is impractical to strive for nothing and to attempt to do what is impossible. Then, stop a while long enough to think of this. You have perhaps been seeking for salvation without recognizing where to look. Whoever asks your help can show you there. What greater gift than this would you be given? What greater gift is there that you would give? Physician, healer, therapist, teacher, heal thyself. Many will come to you carrying the gift of healing if you so elect. The Holy Spirit never refuses an invitation to enter and abide with you. He will give you endless opportunities to open the door to your salvation for such is his function. He will also tell you exactly what your function is in every circumstance and all times. Whoever he sends you will reach you, holding out his hand to his friend. Let the Christ in you bid him welcome, for that same Christ is in him as well. Deny him entrance, and you have denied the Christ in you. Remember the sorrowful story of the gold and the glad tidings of salvation. Remember the plan of God for the restoration of joy and peace. And do not forget how very simple are the ways of God. You were lost in the darkness of the world until you asked for light. And then God sent his son to give it to you.